Hello? Hello? The goblin at the front desk says I was supposed to come here for my preview card? I'm Deb from SPN. Yes, you have come to the right place. And by the way, Cheryl is a perfectly nice woman. There's no need to call her names. Oh, hey, Miss Miz, are you my preview card? And by the way, the receptionist is an actual goblin. I'm not trying to be offensive. I could be your preview card. But first, as per my rules, you must answer a riddle. Isn't that like more of a, like a sphinx thing? It can be my thing too. I'm a Draco genius. Well, I am super stoked to get a preview card, so far away, Miz Mizzy. Okay. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? Yeah, that's, that's the riddle of the Sphinx. What? The riddle of the Sphinx, man. The answer's man. Humans. Okay, one more then. Hey, that wasn't the deal. Or I could just kill and eat you. Okay, one more it is then. What's Michelle Obama's favorite food? Broccoli. Okay, okay, one more. Why couldn't the arsonist go back to his job at the Department of Transportation? Because he burned all his bridges. Look, man, at this point, these are more jokes than riddles. I thought you were a Draco genius. I am the most brilliant of all dragons. Well, when you put it that way, I guess most dragons operate on bloodlust and blind rage, so just being the smartest dragon... Make a commander deck! And something with a reasonable budget, about $100 or something. I don't really do commander decks, guy. And besides, that's not really a riddle. Unless it is. What is deck building but the ultimate riddle, in fact? You know what, Niv Miz, you might be a genius. Agreed. And for your skill in answering riddles, I shall award you a second preview card. Is it Charm with the sweet f and promo art? I get two preview cards and it's Is It Charm? That's awesome! I don't remember you gushing like that when you found out I was your preview card. Look, just make sure you tell the people it's in Modern Masters 2. It wasn't in Modern Masters 2. No, I mean it's in Modern Masters 3. You said 2. I meant also. Look, we don't have time for bits. Now as your commander, I command you to go. Okay, okay, I'm going. Hey, do you know Bolus, by the way? I've got some questions about Amonkhet. No more bits! I got the music in me, knew it simply had to be my destiny. I'm blessed to be the best within my CNH and -E &E. Please believe not Ninja Gaiden. I'm not the guy to fight with them lightning. They come and dumb and I leave them enlightened. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG on the YouTube.com. We like magic, you gotta know by now. And today, something awesome happened. We got two whole Modern Masters 2017 preview cards from the mothership at Wizards of the Coast. And in case you didn't catch the cringy intro, here they are. We're going to take a look today at Niv Mizzet Draco Genius, originally from Return to Ravnica. And Is It Charm as well, which is actually one of my favorite cards. And Wizards didn't even know that. They just sent me Is It Charm, and I was like, oh, Is It Charm? Yes. <laughs> but anyway, a couple of things about these real quick. First of all, if you didn't notice, Niv Mizzet has been downshifted in rarity. He was a mythic in Return to Ravnica, but in Modern Masters 2017, he's a rare, which is pretty cool, even though the Return to Ravnica version is only like a buck fifty already. I'm pretty sure that downshifting the rarity will make this version of the card a little bit cheaper, and this set definitely will get open, driving the um, value of this card down even further. You know, it looks like this set's going to be open with stuff like Liliana and Damnation and like even Blood Moon. Like, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, Snapcaster Mage that I'm excited about in this set. So hopefully it'll get opened a lot, and we can play Niv Mizzet as a commander for super duper cheap, because he's really, really fun. As far as Is It Charm goes, it's just like Niv said, it's got this awesome new art that was previously only available on an F&M promo, so, and this is definitely an upgrade in the art. The thing is freaking gorgeous, and Is It Charm is just awesome. It does all the things you want to do. Now, one thing you guys ask me for a lot, like a lot, a lot, is Commander Deck Decks, and I've never actually done one, but as soon as Wizards sent me these cards in my inbox, I was like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do here. So today, we're going to build a budget, it's around $100, Commander Deck. This is my very first commander deck I've built for the channel so you know be easy on me and remember that we're trying again to be fairly budget here so we're not going to play really really expensive stuff the most expensive card in the entire deck is ten dollars and we're only playing like two of those so without further ado because we're talking about a hundred cards here let's go ahead and get into it of course our commander is Niv Mizzet Draco Genius well, Niv Mizzet immediately gets points for being a big, stupid flying dragon, or I guess a big, brilliant flying dragon, whatever. 
<laughs> but I like playing those in Commander. I like big flying creatures, and I especially like when they're dragons. So immediate points for that. But it obviously goes way deeper here. You know, with this guy, we got a lot of cool tricks available to us because he gets to deal damage and draw cards, which are two of my favorite things to do in a game of Magic. And his two abilities feed into one another. You know, obviously, whenever he does damage to a player, we get to draw a card. And note that that is not specific to combat damage. It's whenever he does any damage to a player. So that feeds into his second ability, which allows us to pay one of each is a killer and deal a damage to a creature or a player. Now we've got a lot of ways to exploit these abilities in this deck, but probably the most important thing when it comes to making these synergies work, at least, is the Paradox Engine. Now we've got two basic ways of exploiting Niv-Mizzet in such a way that we can draw a bunch of cards and deal a bunch of damage all in one turn, but both of those ways to exploit him involve Paradox Engine, so we got to get this card out onto the battlefield. Basically what we're looking to do here is get a bunch of mana rocks out. That way we can pump mana into Niv-Mizzet, deal damage, draw cards, play more spells, and untap all those mana rocks. That way we can go pseudo-infinite or at least until we draw a glut of lands. So there's that. The other way is that we can play like enchant creatures that allow Niv to just tap for, for damage, draw cards, play spells, untap Niv again with the Paradox Engine, and just keep tapping him, drawing cards, playing spells. That's pretty easy too. But again, both of those ways center around this card as a key piece. Now to have a little bit of what at least resembles redundancy in an EDH deck, I imagine that's pretty important, we're going to play a copy of Isochron Scepter and a copy of Dramatic Reversal. Now, don't get me wrong, obviously Dramatic Reversal isn't the only reason to play Isochron Scepter. we got a bunch of stuff that we can stick to Scepter in this deck and have a lot of fun with, but a Dramatic Reversal under an Isochron Scepter is basically like a makeshift paradox engine, which is really nice. We want as many ways of making Nib-Mizzet go off in this deck as possible. In a lot of ways, having these two is even better than having a Paradox Engine because it doesn't count on us casting spells, you know, just pour the mana into it and untap all of your rocks. So, in a lot of ways, we're even more capable of going pseudo-infinite if we have these two cards. Now, as I've mentioned, a big part of what we're doing is mana rocks because, again, we want to be able to untap at least two, if not more, mana rocks with a Paradox Engine so that we can keep Niv-Mizzet going here. So, with that in mind, let me show you all 13 of the mana rocks that we're going to play in this deck. Now let's start with some two mana things that all produce colored mana for us. We're going to play a Corrupted Graph Stone, a Star Compass, a Felwar Stone, and a Cold Steel Heart in the deck. Now these are all fairly simple, you know, they're just two mana things that can produce colored mana for us all pretty easily and reliably, even Felwar Stone, because it's pretty likely there's going to be a red or blue player somewhere else at the table. So these are all just fairly simple here, baseline stuff, we need mana rocks, these are all fairly cheap. Moving on, we're going to play all of the Is It rocks in the deck. We're going to play an Is It Signet, an Is It Clue Stone, and an Is It Key Rune. Now, I really like Key Rune, even though it costs the extra mana. You know, it can attack or block when we most need it to, and that's very important. And Clue Stone can draw us a card, and Signet is actually a very potent accelerant. So I think all of these are auto includes, especially again because of the budget. Continuing our vast array of mana rocks here. We're going to play a copy of Sol Ring, a copy of Thought Vessel, and a copy of Commander's Sphere. Now, Commander's Sphere is just awesome. Like It's just a fantastic card that can also draw us a card if we wanted to. Thought Vessel will allow us to have no maximum hand size, which is super important to all the cards that we want to draw, and Sol Ring is Sol Ring, and we're playing Commander. Now, a couple of these don't necessarily produce colored mana, which isn't great, but we're also looking to cast spells in between activating Niv-Miz, so this colorless mana it can go to good use too. More mana rocks. We're going to play a copy of Cultivator's Caravan and a copy of Dark Steel Ingot in the deck. Most Commander players are very familiar with Ingot, you know, but I'm going to play its friend Cultivator's Caravan because it basically loses the indestructible but gets the option to attack or block sometimes, which is pretty sweet considering it is a pretty meaty creature. And obviously, Ingot is just a Commander staple in a lot of decks. It doesn't go away and it produces whatever mana we want and accelerates us. So, yes to Ingot, absolutely. And I'm going to feature a card by itself here, just one copy of Gilded Lotus, which is the other $10 card in the deck next to Paradox Engine. Um, Gilded Lotus is just so super important that I think it's worth spending the 10 bucks here because when we cast a spell with a Paradox Engine in play, we can untap our Lotus and get an activation for Niv-Mizzet and an extra mana left over, which is just insane. Gilded Lotus is the best rock that we could play. And I don't feel like we have the budget here to play things like Coalition Relic, which would be just fantastic. But again, that card's like, I think, 8 to $10 right now, and we just don't quite have it. 
But budgetary concerns aside, Gilded Lotus is just that important. I think we have to play the copy of it. Now back there a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned another way of making Niv go off. If you have a Paradox Engine in play, and that is all of these auras that allow us to tap Niv Mizzet for damage to a player. That'll obviously allow us to draw a card, hopefully cast a spell, considering we just drew a card, and then untap everything, including Niv Mizzet, with that Paradox Engine, allowing us to tap him for damage again, and then we draw a card, and we cast a spell, and we can tap everything, and blah, blah, blah. It keeps going. So we're going to play a whole six of these. I don't think we need to play a whole lot more, but they are pretty important to the game plan, and there's actually some decent play to a couple of these, so let's take a look. We're going to play a copy of Burning Anger, along with a Fire Whip, and a Hypervolt Grasp to start everything off here. Burning Anger is great because it can allow us to deal up to four, or sometimes in, in special cases, more damage with Niv Mizzet. And that's just, that's way more than one. So I think Burning Anger is worth the high cost, especially considering this is Commander and we will hopefully get to five mana, especially considering it costs six to cast Niv in the first place, the first time from the Command Zone. So we'll definitely get to five. I think Burning Anger is just like, Really, really cool. So it can deal the most damage. Let's play that. Um, Fire Whip can also sack for a damage, and there are a few of these um, Aura Pingers that, that cost two mana. You know, there's Hermetic Study and um, Psionic Gift. There's a few of these, but I think this is the best of them because it has an extra ability on top. So we'll play Fire Whip. Um, Hypervolt Grasp, however, allows us to, you know, return the Grasp to our hand and not get two for one sometimes. So that's really, really important. Hypervolt Grasp is amazing. As far as the other Aura Pingers in the deck, I'm going to play a copy of Lava Mancer's Skill, a Lightning Prowess, and a Quicksilver Dagger. Now, Lava Mancer's Skill is cool because Niv Mizzet is, in fact, a wizard. So you can pop for two damage, and that's pretty cool. And then Lightning Prowess isn't insanely impressive, but sometimes that extra mana is, in fact, worth the haste. But if we're going to play Auras in the deck, we obviously have to play more creatures than just our one commander. Now, we're not playing a butt-ton of creatures in the deck. We want to make room for the Mana Rocks and the Instants and the Sorceries and all the stuff. So we're not actually playing a bunch of creatures, but the ones we are playing, we want to make count. So let's take a look at these. Now, probably the best three creatures that we're playing in the deck, other than niv Mizzet, are Jorian Ruin Diver, Talrin Sky Summoner, and Psychosis Crawler here. Now, Jorian Ruin Diver is just extra advantage. We are looking to play a bunch of spells every turn, and drawing that extra card once a turn is obviously great. So we'll play the one copy of Jorian. Talrin Sky Summoner, whenever we're getting rocking and rolling with niv Mizzet, we're casting a bunch of spells, we'll be able to get a few 2-2s two that fly off of Talrin, and that's always good. And we can, like, slap pingers onto them, too. So that's that's also cool. Um, and Psychosis Crawler is just obviously great. Dealing extra damage whenever we draw a card is great. And since we're drawing so many cards, we'll have a huge hand size. So this thing will be big all game. But mostly, we're looking for that extra damage whenever we draw. That that, you know, double damage, basically, is fan-freaking-tastic. Psychosis Crawler is incredible. We're also going to play a Kyranos, God of Storms, and a Krom, Ludwig's Opus, in the deck. I just didn't think there was any reason not to play Krom, and the extra card advantage is always good, and the fact that we can get an extra commander out of playing it is also sweet. A big flyer is what we're already doing, so why not play a second one? Just Krom is extra card advantage. We probably want that, so let's play it. Now, Kyranos is also just extra card advantage in this deck, which we definitely want, and he can help us blow through land pockets or pick off small dudes, so everything Kyranos does is cool, and occasionally he can become a creature too. A couple of little guys here. I'm going to play one copy of Goblin Electromancer and one copy of Gelectrode in the deck. Now, Goblin Electromancer is just... You know, sort of no-brainer. We're playing a bunch of instants and sorceries in the deck. And once we get going with Niv-Mizzet, we want spells that we play to be as cheap as possible. So Electromancer helps with that, too. And Gelectrode is just great. You know, he's just another thing that allows us to, you know, keep dealing consistent damage. And he's like having a Paradox Engine when you don't have a Paradox Engine. Like, he's his own Paradox Engine. So that's, that's pretty cool, too. And to polish it off here, I'm just going to play a copy of Is It Guild Mage and a copy of Nivix Guild Mage. Both of these are super cheap creatures that do a lot of utility things that we want to do. Copying spells is great, looting is great, just, and there's more than that. <laughs> so these are just small early game dudes that are even good if you draw them relatively late because they can start doing stuff for you pretty quickly. Now, before I get to the instants and sorceries and such, I'm going to stop off and tell you about the artifacts in the deck, because we're a commander deck, and chances are, we'll play some artifacts, starting with one copy of Elixir of Immortality here. And yeah, I'll give this card a little bit of a spotlight. We're drawing a bunch of stuff, and obviously we can't go off and just kill everybody at the table, because we'll eventually run out of cards. So this allows us to 
wonderfully put all those cards back into our library and the elixir too which is super sweet because we can keep running into it keep shuffling the cards back in and not have to worry about decking ourselves i also think it's important to play a couple of equipments that'll help keep removal off of nib's back so with that in mind let's take a look at these we're going to play a copy of lightning greaves and a copy of swift foot boots surprising no one <laughs> you know both of these are obviously you know one gives shroud one gives hex proof so both of these can just keep things from, you know, killing Niv, which is something we really, really, really don't want to happen. And there's added bonuses. Haste is always good, too. So, yes to both of these, absolutely. Now, to cap off the artifacts, I'm going to tell you about the one copy of Howling Mine that we're playing in the deck. And while I'm talking to you about Howling Mine, I know it's not an artifact, but I might as well go ahead and tell you about the copy of Fevered Visions that's also in the deck, because they're very similar cards. Now, obviously, in this deck, we want to draw a bunch of cards, again, to blow through land pockets and make sure that we have business in our hand so that we can keep Niv-Mizzet going. And both of these are very good at that. They have their advantages. Howling Mine is fairly cheap, and any mana can be spent to play it. But Fever Visions can go on offense for you, and that's super sweet, too. So I definitely feel like it's worth carrying these two cards. Now, the rest of the deck is made up almost entirely of instants and sorceries, and a lot of these are fairly low to the ground so that, again, we have the mana to keep Niv-Mizzet going in the middle of the game. So let's start by looking at some of the card advantage that we're playing because we want the cards that we draw with Niv-Mizzet to also draw us cards. Again, we want as much gas as possible so that we don't hit land pockets and just fizzle out with Niv-Mizzet halfway through trying to go off. So let's look at these real quick. We're going to play a Ponder, a Brainstorm, a Preordain, and a Gataxian Probe in the deck here. And all of these just cost the one mana, which is very, very important, because we want to be able to draw cards with Niv. You have those cards, also draw us cards, and just keep the combo going as long as possible. And that for that to happen, they need to be very cheap, and all of these pull that off. Gataxian Probe is free. Well, you know, that's, that's pretty sweet right there, and gives you a card. Preordain and Ponder are both sorcery speed, great card selection tools that are maybe some of the best card selection in, in the game period, so you want to play those too, especially considering how cheap they are in converted mana cost. Um, and then Brainstorm is fantastic. It nets you, or you know, it gives you three cards. That's insane. And stacking the deck is great when you're in the middle of rocking and rolling with your Niv-Mizzet, because you can basically put business on, you know, on top of your deck and keep the combo going that way. And Brainstorm's also an instant, which means we can slap it onto an Isochron Scepter, so just everything about Brainstorm is awesome. While we're on one mana stuff that draws you a card, I know it's not an instant or a sorcery, but I'll tell you about the one copy of Curiosity in the deck, which is a pretty sweet combo with Niv-Mizzet, you know, it just gives us more cards whenever he deals damage, so that's pretty sweet too, and it's just the one mana, we can fit it in on, um, on a lot of turns, so definitely don't want to play Curiosity, it's just such a hilarious combo. Now to finish off our fairly detailed card advantage suite here, we're going to play a Factor Fiction, a Reverse Engineer, a Dragon Lord's Prerogative, and a Treasure Cruise in the deck. Now, treasure Cruise is three mana for or three cards for one mana an awful lot of the time, so we will definitely play that. Um, Dragon Lord's Prerogative is, you know, four cards, so that's great. And there's a chance that it's uncounterable if, if we have a Niv Mizzet out, so that's sweet too. Reverse Engineer, we're obviously playing all of these artifacts and mana rocks and stuff. It'll be very easy to cast this for very, very cheap. And it's three cards too. And Factor Fiction is just one of maybe the best cards in the history of the game, so we'll play that. Now, we're not really playing a whole lot of removal in the deck. Obviously, Niv Mizzet can ping creatures when we want him to. And when we put like any of these aura pingers onto any of our creatures, they can ping creatures too, you know. But mostly, we're not looking for a whole lot of interaction. We're just trying to make this combo work as much as possible. So, with that in mind, we're not playing a ton of removal, but we are playing some. Let me go ahead and tell you about it. We'll start with one Lightning Bolt and one Mizium Mortars. Well, Lightning Bolt is just awesome, and it can be slapped on Ice Crown Scepter for, you know, to make hilarity ensue. So we'll, we'll do that. It's just an iconic card. Only one mana. Three damage to a target is, is still fantastic. So we'll make room for a Bolt. And Mizium Mortars has the chance of, like, taking out half the board in one shot. Or one pretty decent-sized creature, too, you know, for just two mana. So... Good versatility on that. I figure it's just 40 cents. I'd rather play it than Cyclonic Rift, which is like $8 right now. And we'll round out the removal suite with a Capsize, a Prophetic Bolt, and a Fireball. Now, 
Capsize and Fireball are just two of my favorite old school cards of all time. I've been playing with these cards for 20 years or so now, and I still love them. Capsize is just nasty. Anybody who's played with or against Capsize knows that it's one of the more annoying cards, um, especially one-on-one, -on -one, but obviously this is Commander, so it loses a little luster, but it's very easy to, to, you know, cast it, buy it back, cast it, buy it back, all in the same turn, especially with all these mana rocks in the deck. And I figured since we do have all these mana rocks, we're producing so much mana, we'd also play Fireball because I like the ability to spread the love and hit a bunch of different targets, or conversely, just hit one dude in the face for like 20, <laughs> you know? So I've, I've loved Fireball for 20 years, and I'm not going to stop now. As far as Prophetic Bold goes, it may be the best of these cards, although... Capsize is dumb, so <laughs> Capsize is just so ridiculous, so I don't know if that's a true statement. But Prophetic Bull is great, you know, it's four damage to a target, which is great. And best thing about it is that it allows us to go four cards deep and get the best card of those. And in Commander, that's even better than it usually is. So Prophetic Bolt allows us to dig pretty far while also acting as removal. Definitely want to play that. Well, that's not really all the defense that we're playing, though. You know, Counter Spells are pretty defensive cards, too, and I want to play a few of those, although, again... I want to remind you that the interaction is fairly low in this deck. We're just trying to do what we want to do. And counter spells will help us protect, but I also don't want to spend too many slots on counter. So here's what we ended up with here. We're going to play a copy of counter spell, a copy of negate, one dissolve, and a counter flux here. Now counter spell is just the OG, and we're definitely going to play it. Negate is good against, you know, what, 60%? of what stuff, you know, at least 50% of what people will play against you in Commander, so we want to play a Negate. And both Counterspell and Negate can go on Isochron Scepter, which is pretty annoying. Um, and Dissolve allows us to Scry, which is pretty good, especially considering how cheap the card is right now, cost-wise. And then Counter Flux can allow us to just counter a spell for three mana or blow everything off the stack, which is sometimes pretty important in Commander. Now I'm going to stop off real quick before we get to our final category and talk about some cards that didn't really have a place necessarily. These are all just like utility cards that do more than one thing for us. So let me show you these real quick. We're going to play one copy of Is It Charm, one copy of Invoke the Fire Mine, and one copy of Mystic Retrieval here. Now, Is It Charm just does it all. You know, we can loot, we can counter spells, we can shock a guy, just... Those are all very, very important options, even even the counter spell option um, to mid and late game. So... Very, very good. Just good toolbox card here. I've always loved as a charm. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite cards. So, um, and then we're playing the Invoke the Fire Mine, which can either draw us a bunch of cards or deal a bunch of damage all at one time. Both of those options are great, especially with all the mana rocks in the deck. I'll make room for an Invoke the Fire Mine. And then Mystic Retrieval can basically allow us to replay any of our instants and sorceries like twice. So <laughs> that's pretty stupid sweet too. You know, it's basically like extra card advantage. So we'll definitely play the Mystic Retrieval. It's actually really, really good. Our final category before we get to the lands here is one of the most important parts of nearly any commander deck. And that's all the various tutors that we're playing to make sure that we can get the cards that we want to get. To that end, let's look at some artifact tutors here. We're going to play a copy of War of Invention, a Fabricate, and a Trophy Mage here. Now, War of Invention and Fabricate can obviously go get any artifact, but they're mostly copies two and three of Paradox Engine in the deck. It's super important, and you will mostly be searching for that card with these two cards, but it helps be able to go get whatever you want. And Trophy Mage can go get a variety of different rocks for us, so that's fairly important too. Now to go get spells for us, we're going to play a copy of Merchant Scroll and a copy of Mystical Tutor. Both of these are just like commander staples and it's pretty obvious that you play them in a deck that's stacked with instants and sorceries and such, you know. Merchant Scroll looks fairly limited in that it can only get blue instants, but there is plenty of those in the deck that we want to get, especially, again, Dramatic Reversal. If we've already got an Isochron Scepter, we can go search up a Dramatic Reversal and stick it, so that's pretty sweet right there. And the final tutor and the final main deck card that we're playing, actually, is a copy of Firemind's Foresight here. Now, I really like tutoring cards, and this is Commander, and we've got all these mana rocks, so we're going to get to seven mana. Why not tutor three cards? That's card advantage and tutoring all at one time. The card is actually super stupid and is fairly priced at seven mana. So that's it for the main deck. Now we're in the home stretch. Let's take a look at these lands real quick before we finish up with some final thoughts here. We're going to do this a little bit differently than usual and just use slides to talk about all these one-of lands. First of all, we're going to play a copy of Smoldering Crater, a copy of Remote Isle, a copy of Lonely Sandbar, and a Forgotten Cave. Now all of these are cycling lands 
that produce the mana that we need them to produce when we want them to. And I just feel like it's super important to do that in this deck. Again, we want to draw a bunch of cards, and we kind of hate drawing lands when we're trying to keep this combo going with Niv Niz. So having lands that cycle is pretty important. But into some duels here, we're going to play a copy of Temple of Epiphany, a Swiftwater Cliffs, a Highland Lake, and an Is It Guildgate here. Now all of these are fairly cheap except for maybe, I guess, Temple of, Epi of Epiphany. It's like just under $3 right now, but it's easily the best of all of these dual lands. Scrawing is fantastic in this deck and in EDH in general, but I really like it in this deck to help set up better plays for Niv Niz. For the rest of the duels, we're going to play a Shivan Reef and an Is It Boiler Works. Now, Shivan Reef doesn't come into play tap, but we don't really care as much about that in Commander, but it's still a dual land and we're going to definitely play it. As far as Boiler Works go, these are more or less also staples in Commander, you know. They just produce both colors of mana that you need. Tapping one of these will give you an activation on Niv Mizzet, so definitely play it. I'm going to play one copy of Terramorphic Expanse and one copy of Evolving Wilds to have a little bit of redundancy there, thin our deck a little bit, and get the mana that we need, and only pay 10 cents for doing all of that. So definitely want to play both of those. I'm going to play a Halimar Depths and a Desolate Lighthouse in the deck. Um, Halimar Depths allows us to sort of dig three cards deep, and that's always welcome. We want to do that. And then Desolate Lighthouse allows us to draw and discard, which is something else that we want to do on turns where we have nothing better to do. To finish off the non-basics here, we're going to play a copy of Reliquary Tower and a copy of Riptide Laboratory. Reliquary Tower is just another thing that allows us to hold as many cards as we want, so we definitely want to play that. And the Riptide Laboratory is great with Niv-Mizzet to sort of have just another thing to help save him from removal attempts, which are going to happen. And the rest of it is just all basic lands where we're going to play nine islands, nine mountains, keep it fair, keep it even, just to sort of round things out here. This is the cheapest possible land you can play. And we're going to play 18 of them to also help keep the cost down. And, you know, you could play stuff like Steam Vents and, you know, all, there's all kinds. You know, you can play Volcanic Island if you have them, but we're not super rich and we want to build this deck for 100 bucks. And Volcanic Island is probably more than that right now. So we're just going to play these basic duels that are mostly common and uncommon that are available to us. And you know, a couple of non-basics and finish it off with basics. Whew, well, with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am tapped out. That's all I got for this one. Make sure that you check the description for this deck list. That way you don't have to, like, just watch the video a hundred times. Although you can do that, too, if you want to. You know, just go through and write down all the stuff. No, just check the description and you're, you'll find the deck list there. Um, and while you're at it, make sure that you like the video. That'll help me out a lot, a lot, a lot. Thank all of you, by the way, for getting me here. We are at 50,000 subscribers, more or less, um, by now. And by the time this video is out for a day or two, we probably will be at 50,000 subscribers. So thank everyone for getting me there. It's all, it's really all thanks to you guys. And thank you, Wizards, for giving me these preview cards finally. So, and hope, thank you. Hopefully we did a good enough job. We'll keep getting those because this is... One of the better things that's like ever happened to me. So <laughs> keep them coming, Wizards. That'd be awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. Let me know what I missed. What are some possible upgrades too? You know, we could play a bunch of different stuff. You know, dig through time. There's Wheel of Fortune. There's the other Niv Mizzet. I acknowledge that he exists. I just didn't want any of the spotlight to be stolen from Draco Genius. You know, there's a ton of stuff that you could play in this deck. Let me know any ideas that you have down there in the comments. But for now, I got to go because I got to edit like an hour and a half long video. I'm pretty sure that's about how long it is. Hope you guys really like this one. I have enjoyed every second of being able to do this. Again, thanks, Wizards. And thanks all of you again. I'll see you guys next time with a standard deck tech in just a couple of days. Until then, thanks for watching, my Wizards. Sincerely, thanks for watching me. Why do you do that? I don't know.